notice. This is 80 minutes long. Sit down, put in earphones and and jaw. MK Brad's lecture. Love it. I think that's what really separates us from everyone else. This is not competition. We're not here to try to outdo other people. That shit's lame. That's not that's not how people grow and develop. Competition is a form of, of growth and development, but it should never be priority. The priority is how do I learn? How do I help? How do I give back? And how do I learn about myself in the process? That's what we're building here. And that is always going to be the center key nucleus of kingdom. Anyways, I want to talk about a specific topic real quick, and we'll keep it short. But before I ask that, before I get into that, I want to ask you guys a question. If you could just kind of be, kind of reflect real quick on your life, your personality, your life, your character as an individual. What would you say is the number one thing holding you back from having all the things that you want in life? Let me know in the chat. If you could pick one thing, whether it's lack of discipline or lack of self-expression or lack of confidence, anxiety, lack of focus, whatever the case may be, what is that one thing that you feel stopping you back, is, is holding you back and stopping you from actually achieving everything that you want in life? What is that one thing? One said fear. One said imposter syndrome. That's a big one. Seeing your sleep schedule. Lack of discipline and focus. Yep. That they're, they're sometimes cold and they underestimate people. Laziness is a huge one. Yeah. Lack of consistency. Lack of energy. Lack of motivation. Being indecisive. Yeah, all these apply. All of these are traits that people have that, that really hold them back from getting what they want in life. Now, that's just, you got to ask yourself the next question, which is why have these traits? The lack of energy, indecisiveness, the lack of discipline, lack of focus. Where did that come from? How did you build that? It didn't just it didn't just appear out of nowhere. It's not an objective trait. It's a subjective trait. You trained it. Where did it come from? Bad environment. Mm. Huge one. Someone said, ooh, this is a huge one. Someone said trying to fit in as a major. It's major. Where did this come from? Right? Because when you were a kid, you had all the, the confidence in the world. You were free. In fact, the idea of confidence didn't even really, you weren't even thinking about that. You know, you were just free. You didn't have a lack of discipline. You didn't have a lack of focus. There's no such thing as anxiety. Where did these things come from? What triggered these traits and how did you embody these negative traits? You know? and, and, to, and some people have already given, given the answer. Everything boils down to a couple of things. But the main things is caring about what other people think about you. If, if all these traits were like branches on a tree, the tree itself would be fear of what other people think about me. Hmm. All right? All right? There's a couple other major reasons, right? But that's a huge one. Example, why are you even lazy? If you let's take someone who's lazy, right? Someone who who or someone who doesn't have any discipline, which is basically just laziness, right? Why are you afraid to take action? What is what is laziness? Laziness is I cannot get myself to get up and do the things that I know that I need to do. You gotta ask yourself why. Let's get to the root of the problem. Why can you not get yourself up? do the things that you need to do the answer would be oh oh okay maybe i'm afraid of what other people think about me maybe i feel that if i get up and take action and i fail at it so why did i just put it in the chat fear of failure mm -hmm. maybe if i get off my ass and take action but i fail at it i might get judged maybe if i get up and i take action and i make a mistake i may judge myself You actually reverse engineer all these issues. It all goes back to you caring about what other people think about you. And that is something that is instilled into you. 
by your environment. School, parents, society. Okay. Let's look at someone who is afraid of expressing themselves. Someone who's quote unquote mainstream definition of introverted. Right? They can't express themselves, they can't talk. They stumble over their words, can't approach a girl, can't approach people in general. Why is that? Someone will, someone will say, if they go to therapy, they'll be like, well, I'm introverted. That's not solving the problem. That's not the root of the problem. Why are you introverted? That is something that is built. That is not something that is objective. You're a blank slate. And when you're a kid, there is no such thing as extrovert or introverted. You are just you. You're just free. What made you, quote unquote, introverted it is something that you developed over time why are you afraid to express yourself because you care what other people think all goes back to that all goes back to that pressure stress you care about the judgment of others it's not your fault You're trained to do so now, let's go even deeper. So how is it trained, Brad? Well, one, you could take a look at school. Right? School sets up everything so that you care about what other people think about you. So notice. Notice how much stress you have to pass your quiz. Hey, yesterday was Friday. I'm sure a lot of you guys had quizzes or tests, whatever. How much stress or pressure did you have on your quiz yesterday? Pressure in the sense of needing to pass. You feel pressure that if you get a if you get an F on that quiz, you're gonna get judged by your parents, your friends, society. The reason why everyone has so much pressure on their shoulders in school is because if you get bad grades, you feel that there is going to be some form of external judgment on you. If there was no form of external pressure, external judgment external whatever you want to call it and you wouldn't give a fuck the reason why you feel pressure and stressed out for passing your quizzes is because you are literally being trained in real time to please other people if i don't get a straight a my mom and my dad are going to ground me if i don't get straight a's my grandparents are not going to send me money for christmas if i don't get straight a's friends at school are going to call me dumb I get straight A's. My teacher is gonna have is gonna hold a teacher student or a teacher parent meeting. Tell my parents that I need to get my act together and that I'm not fulfilling my potential and that I'm stupid and lazy. If I don't get straight A's, then I won't be able to get into a good college. And therefore, the rest of society is gonna call me stupid. Or do you see how nuanced and subtle all these things are? But they're playing an absolute direct fact into the fact that you don't love yourself. All your anxiety, your depression, like, it, all this stuff is stemming from this. Caring about what other people think about you. Not 100% of it, but it is the main portion. Sure. And let's look at another example. Hmm. Let me ask you guys. What are some ways in which you feel you have to please others? What are some ways in that you feel, whether it's been trained by your parents or society or whoever, what are some ways in which you feel that you have to please others? Get to the bottom of this. Well, school is one of them, right? Getting good grades, making sure that you get straight A's. What are some other ways? Someone said changing how I act around certain people. That's a huge one. UG14. That is a huge one, brother. All right. What are some other ones? One said making sure that they have a good reputation, right? In order to get their attention and maintain networks around school and have a good reputation, yes. Giving presentations, sales meeting, yes. Yes. What else? We just talked about good grades, right? you feel that there's pressure from being successful, right? What about making money? You feel that there's pressure this sense and, and stress with social dynamics, right? Having a girlfriend, 
having friends who are who have status and influence. Right? You feel that there are stress and pressures for your aesthetic, making sure that you're wearing the right clothes, the clothes that other people care about. You have the the new Yeezys. You have the new Louis Vuittons. You have the new Jordans. Wearing the clothes that everyone else is wearing. Right? Being part of the cool kids. Are you seeing at the cool kids people at school? Someone said, making sure that you are funny. Everyone wants to be funny and it's pushed other people. If you're not, you're seen as weird. It's a huge one. You, that, that is a huge one. Do you have the personality traits that other people seem to be valuable? You see, there's so many different things that we're doing that we're not even aware of consciously on a day-to-day -day basis where we are living our lives in order to maintain something that I call the facade. And the facade is basically a mask that you put on in front of other people in order to please them, in order to validate their expectations of you. And every single time that you do this, which is all day, every day, for 99.9% .9 of human beings alive, every time that you do this, every second that you spend doing this, the second you are basically just draining and killing yourself. You're not... The, this is the way energy works, right? Energy is supposed to flow out of you. It's supposed to flow. Imagine water running through a pipe. It's supposed to go through one side and out the other. It's supposed to flow. Every time you live with your facade, right? And like I just said, the facade is the mask that you wear in front of other people. Every time you place that mask on your face, what you're doing is, right? Imagine water going through a pipe, through one end and not the other. It's supposed to flow through. Every time you put on the mask, you're like putting a barrier in between the pipe. Now the water cannot flow through. Water is being built up at that point. It creates pressure. It creates pressure. It's not flowing through. When you place a barrier in the pipe, it creates pressure. Eventually, that pipe explodes. That's what you're doing to yourself. When you're not living in alignment with what you want, but you're putting on a mask for everyone else, energy that's supposed to flow through your body, that divine energy that comes from the cosmos, that unique personality that you have that you're putting on pause, to wear that mask for other people, that energy is being barriered. It's being stopped. It's not flowing anymore, which builds up. It creates pressure in that built up of energy, right? What so creates all those major negative emotions like your anxiety, like your depression, like your being introverted, like your lack of self-expression, lack of social skills, lack of everything. It's from you not letting that energy flow, not being yourself. Now, here's the real question, right? So we kind of just broke that down. Here's the real question. Pay attention. Pay attention. Here's the real question. I, do you feel the need to validate everyone else? What's the point? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why? Why? the point what is the point oh i'm trying to i'm trying to act this way around this chick I gotta make sure i come across as really cool and, and dominant and uh, i gotta make sure i get straight a's for my family I gotta make sure that i become really successful for this person for that I gotta make sure i have a whole bunch of followers on social media why what's the point what is the point Someone said, so do you, how do you think we should destroy the facade? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm asking you guys a question right now. Why do you feel the need to validate others? I'm asking. I, I want answers. I'm asking you. Why do you feel the need? And it's not a trick question. I genuinely, all we're doing right now is presenting ideas. And we're, we're working our way backwards. We're reverse engineering. This is how you fix your problems. You have to reverse engineer how they were built. All of your problems are built brick by brick. So if you peel the bricks, the layers, if you peel the layers off like an onion, eventually you're going to get to the core root, the nucleus of the problem. Why do you feel the need to validate others? Someone said, I do it for my family, but mainly for myself. 
I don't want to validate others. Okay, so someone said that they they do it for their family because we're afraid. Someone said because we're afraid of how we'll be left out of everything. That's a huge one, right? The whole uh, survival of the fittest, or rather, the whole survival mentality, right? The whole I must fit in so that I don't get exiled, I don't get left out, I don't die off. I need to fit in to some degree, right? That's a, that's a perception that a lot of people have. That I think it stems from our ancestors. That's something to do. Exactly, right? Survival mentality. How do you guys feel the need to validate others? I said, we will be included in something because of the traits that we are, are created by the mask. Yes. Yes. All of those are true. There is even something deeper that someone hasn't even gotten to yet. It's just very hard to admit. It's very hard to admit. And I, I'm really trying to see if someone can get it. It takes a, a lot of humility to get to the root of this problem. I, we, we've gotten to, on a materialistic level, we've gotten to the root, which is survival. Right? But that material, materialism is not the root of the problem. It's a very 3D mentality. Yes, survival. But why do you feel the need to survive? Get into the root. So, Brad, can you repeat the question? The question is, why do you feel the need to validate other people? I'll give it 60 more seconds to see if someone can get it. To the absolute root of it. Oh, someone's close. Someone said, okay, I appeal for, I, I, I'm appealing from others, giving us higher self-esteem. Yes. But why? Why do you want others to give you self-esteem? Very close. 90% there. Almost to the root. Almost to the root. 30 seconds. We feel better about ourselves? Yes, but why do you need to feel better about yourself? Why do you need to feel better about yourself externally rather than internally? Something that you're not doing that's, that's making... There's a hole, right? There's a hole inside of you that's built from not doing something. Therefore, you need external validation. Okay, I'm saying, why are you creating that hole? What created that hole? Survival needs that's still materialistic. There's, a, there's something underneath that as well. How do you feel they need to survive? All right. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Reason why reverse engineering all the way back to its root, the reason why you feel other the feel the need to validate people is because you need to feel you feel the need to fit in so that you survive. The reason why you feel the need to fit in so that you survive is because you don't love yourself. Told you no one's gonna get it because it takes very very deep humility the reason why you feel the need for all these things is because you don't love yourself that's simple if you, if you truly loved yourself you wouldn't feel the need to do jack shit including fit in to survive so then the next question that comes that stems from that is you even know what love is. You even know what love is. That's something 99.9, .9, including myself, including myself, 99.9% .9 of all human beings don't actually really know. Mmm. This is huge, and this is why I wanted to start this conversation, right? Someone said, of course I don't love myself when I know that I'm not my highest version. That is huge right there, because that is the absolute wrong mentality. Absolute wrong mentality. If you can't love yourself when you're not your highest version, then you'll never love yourself, my friend. You'll never love yourself. It's okay, so we need, to we need to define what love is. We need to define what love is because it's very obvious, and it's not your fault. It's very obvious that most people do not even know what love is. Because we'll get to that in a second, actually. Let's actually define love. Someone define love. What is love? Define what is love? 
I said love is a force that leads to a higher state of consciousness. Yeah, that's more of what love does. But what is love itself? <laughs> Someone said you can't really define it. It's too abstract. Is it though? Is it though? Is that what you've been taught? Or have you just not felt it enough? If you felt love enough, what love actually is, you'll be able to define it. Feeling. Okay. Getting closer. A feeling of what? Feeling of what? What does it do? What is, what is let's not think of what the operations of love are. Not let's not think about what it does. Let's think about what it is. What does it feel like? I see you guys getting value out of this, right? We we haven't even really covered anything, but you see how you see how these are topics and no one really talks even in self-development. No one really these complex things you have to discuss. You're just gonna be too surface layer. We're trying to go all the way to the root. Anyways, what is love? Not the operations of love. What does it feel like? I said love comes in in many forms, like feelings for a person, liking them for their body, being attracted to their personality. That's not love, my friend. <laughs> now, do you guys see how sad this is, right? Okay, so a state of oneness, a state of harmony, yes. A state of a state of peace, yes. Yes, what are the feelings? What does love feel like? Actual true love. I said trust, okay. Dream. <laughs> Sure, I don't really know what that means. Self acceptance? Yes. Continue. It's closer. Are you guys noticing? Are you guys, this is how sad the world is, right? And I'm not picking on you guys because I myself, this is for everybody. This is for everyone. But notice how, notice how when someone asks the question, what is love? It takes a lot of thinking and dissection to even get that state of this world is so satanic that most people don't, can't even immediately define what love is. It takes a lot of contemplation. Right? That just shows you the level of hedonism that, that runs this world. Sad. All right, let, let's, let's move on now. There is not one sheer definition of love, right? However, love is not something that is subjective. It does have feelings. Someone said self-acceptance, which is a huge one. Someone said it gives you the feeling of absolute harmony. Someone else said it gives you the feeling of absolute peace. Yes, all things that love feels like. Here's what you need to understand about love. This is the primary thing that you need to understand about love. And, and love is something that you need to have direct experience of. It's not something that you can just simply understand intellectually. If you simply understand something intellectually, you, have not, you don't understand it. Wisdom is the embodiment of something. You don't fully know something until you've embodied it, until you, you fully have direct experience of it. Okay, so just being able to think about something intellectually and know the formula of something is not wisdom. That is purely just information. But anyways, love, key thing that you need to understand about what love is, is that it is not dependent on anything. Otherwise, it is not love. Mm, chosen one said it love is freedom yes that is a feeling that love gives you does that click i'm gonna repeat it love is not not in ot love is not dependent on anything Are, is that clicking no one has ever told you this about love no one Love is not dependent on anything. Otherwise, it's not love. So, for example, someone said, I need love. I don't love myself until I can become my highest version. By definition, you will never actually love yourself. You can be attracted to yourself, meaning not sexually, obviously, meaning you're fulfilling something via dependent external things that's not love love does not depend on anything it just is it's a choice As someone said it definition of love not dependent on anything otherwise it is not love gives you freedom exactly example 
parents say they love you, right? <laughs> about to go deep as fuck. Uh, let's not even go there, right? Let's just take, let's take your, let's take a relationship, right? Let's take, uh, let's take your friends. Say that you love your best friend, right? But if your best friend cheats, cheats, if your girlfriend cheats on you with your best friend, do you love him? Well, then is it love? Oh, it is not. There is no value exchange with love. Another example. You say that you love your girlfriend. If your girlfriend cheats on you, do you still love her? Or are you going to throw that bitch to the streets? <laughs> Someone said, I love her. Woof. Man. You're higher, much more higher developed than I am, man. I wish I could get to that level. No, 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 no. Don't get this twisted. Someone said, I, I, I love her, but I don't like her. No, no, no. Don't get this twisted. Love, remember, love is not dependent on anything. There's no dependencies. There is no, you must do this. You must do X, Y, and Z in order for me to give you my all. In order for me to be the same person. That is dependent on something. That is not love. That is attraction. 99.9% .9 of human beings are attracted to the other individual. Meaning, this person fills X, Y, and Z. Therefore, I will give them X, Y, and Z. That is not love. Love is, I give you X, Y, and Z no matter what you do. Love is not dependent on anything. So, what, so this is what society has done. Society has taken the word love. And really, they mean the word attraction. They're using the wrong verbal semantics, right? Ooh. One just said it. One just said it, right? I don't even think my parents love me. That's what I'm getting at. This conversation... I want what you guys get from this conversation that we're having. We're only halfway there. That no one actually understands what love is. So because no one actually understands what love is, that's why everyone's so fucked up. <laughs> you're trying to fulfill all these people's expectations of you. You're trying to make sure that your parents like you to get good grades. You're trying to make sure your parents love you so that you can go to good college. You're trying to make sure that your girlfriend likes you. You're trying to make sure that your friends like you. You're trying to become all successful so that, so that you can feel good about yourself. You're trying to become successful so that other people will validate you so that you can get status and pre-selection and influence and power so that the world will love you, right? But none of those things, by definition, if, defini if the definition of love is there are no dependencies, receiving peace, harmony, all the feelings that we said come with love, right? To receive those feelings of other people require no dependencies. All the things that you're doing are not love. Because in order to receive the things like, like we stated, harmony, peace, feelings of, uh, of bliss, those things other people require you to do something in order to get it so by definition they don't love you it is simply a form of attraction you must accomplish x y and z and then you can receive the bliss and the harmony and the happiness and the peace that's not love that is attraction clicking with you are, are you are you starting to see this someone said it their parents don't actually love them the fact is the fact of the matter is that most people's parents don't love them in fact the fact of the matter is the majority if not 99.9% .9 .9 of people's parents don't love them it's more attraction there's nothing wrong with that i mean from god's perspective there's something wrong with that right we so for example if your parents truly loved you, they wouldn't care what you do. Oh, someone just gave the perfect adjective. Perfect adjective. A word conditional. That is exactly it right there. Love is unconditional. 
There are no conditions. There are no requirements. There are no dependencies. Let's go back to our parents. Do your parents actually love you? And when I say love, I'm talking about the pure definition. I'm not talking about, yes, your parents would die for you. Yes, your parents are heavily attracted to you. Yes, your parents still raise you. Your parents still love spending time. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking about the pure definition of love, the love that God has for you. Do your parents have that? Meaning, if you decide right now that you're never going to get another straight A ever again, or if you decide right now that you're never going to go off to college, or if you decide right now that you're going to go do something crazy, your parents still going to love you. They still going to associate with you. Are they still going to, you know? Your parents have conditions, is the question. Oh, you have to ask yourself. If you want to know if someone truly loves you, because it is possible to have that pure love that God has. You have to ask yourself, with every single relationship in your life, does this person have conditions for me? I just ask the question. So does that mean love comes without conditions? Yes, that is the point. Love has zero conditions. It is unconditional. That is love. If love has conditions, it is not, lo it is not love anymore. It is attraction. How to separate the two. There is a difference between love and attraction. Example, with your friends, the, the whole example of your friends. I love my friends, okay? But you said if your, boy, if your boy fucks your girlfriend, all of a sudden you don't like him anymore. That is a condition. So you don't love him. You're attracted to him. You're attracted to him, in, not sexually, obviously. Let's grow up here. You're attracted to him in the sense of there is value exchange. Oh, me and my friend have the same sense of humor. Therefore, I hang out with him. Me and my friend like the same video games. We like the same sports. We, like the, we have the same hobbies. We have the same passions. Therefore, I hang out with that person. That is attraction. That is not love. Love is, no matter what they do, no matter if we have the same passions or not, whether Umi is smashing this chick, smashing my, it doesn't matter what he's doing, I love him. Exact same way as if he did have the same passions, as if he wasn't fucking my girlfriend, as if... Conditional versus unconditional. Owen just said it perfectly. We've been using the word love in the wrong way all this time. Exactly. Exactly. It says, so Brad, so the only true love is with God. And that is the point of the conversation. That's what we're heading to next. Now that we know what love actually is, everyone like that comment. Everyone like that comment. The only true love is with God. That is the whole point of this entire conversation, guys. Now that we actually understand, on an intellectual level at least, what love actually is, realize that no one in this 3D reality on Earth actually, truly, purely, from God's definition, loves you. They're simply attracted to you. Right? So then the next question becomes... Why are you trying to please people that don't love you? Why are you dedicating your life to pleasing and validating people who don't even actually love you? I instead, instead of trying to please God, the only individual that actually at all times, 24-7, no matter what you do, loves you, right? Because it's unconditional. God's love is unconditional. There are some mixed messages in, the, in, in, in all these holy texts that says God is a wrathful God or God is a jealous God or God's gonna, he's going to destroy you. God judges you. All of those are complete contradictions to the definition of love, which is unconditional. By definition, if, if God is going to judge you, if God is going to send you to hell, if God is going to punish you, if it's conditional, <laughs> complete contradiction. Bible says that that love is unconditional, but then says he's going to he's, he has a wrath. He's gonna he's gonna send his wrath and kill all the people who didn't live up to his expectations. Which one is it? 
he love you or is it attraction? Which one is it? Right. True definition of love is unconditional. And once you know that God actually loves you, no matter what you do, it doesn't mean that there's not consequences. Right. Who created the consequences? You or God? I had hidden us with the night. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? If you're if you're receiving nihilistic views from a conversation on love, you're missing the entire point, my friend. Underlying point is that God loves you no matter what. Why are you living for other people rather than God? That's underlying point underlying point is who are you trying to please in your life who are you living for right all your anxiety like we talked about earlier those branches on the tree your anxiety your depression of not living up, up to other people's expectations or your expectations of yourself right your lack of self-expression i can't say this around that person or they're going to judge me or i can't say this around that girl or she may not like me why are you living for other people rather than living for god because from god's perspective all of those things are fallacies. All those things are sin. Trying to live up to other people's expectations from God's perspective is a sin. Because God is all about unconditional love. That's what all the prophets taught. Whether, whether you believe in the Jesus figure or the Muhammad or the Krishna, they all taught the same underlying principle. Which is that we should follow God's way, which is the unconditional love way. And part of having unconditional love means that you love yourself. Someone said it earlier, right? Someone said, I can't love myself until I've become my highest version. Right there means that you will never love yourself. Because once you become your highest versions and now you're allowed, now have met the requirements, you have now met the conditions to actually be happy, it's not actual love. Not actually happy. You have to reach certain expectations to get there. God doesn't see you that way. Why do you see yourself that way? Who are you living for? Only the world, only Satan in this matrix in society says you have to become successful. You have to make money. You have to fuck that girl. You have to have you have to have power and influence on social media to actually love yourself. God says the complete opposite of that. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? I once just said, Brad, most people don't even, here don't even believe in God. However, isn't it just a higher force? Could you elaborate? Yeah. One of the reasons, let me ask you guys who don't believe in God. Why do you not believe in God? Right? Because it all goes back to someone's definition of God, right? If you believe that God is a human being sitting in the clouds, then obviously, duh, that's not a person. That's one of the issues that religion does. Is they anthropomorphize God, meaning they give God its human characteristics. <laughs> if, you, if you believe that God is like some old dude <laughs> on the cloud, I know a lot of you guys are young, but... And here's the thing. There's no judgment in that either. You just have to reverse engineer where that belief came from because you've never experienced it. You don't have any direct experience of a dude sitting in the sky. How do you believe it? That's a great question. They said, how is the idea of unconditional love going to help me in achieving my goals? Let's just extrapolate everything that we just talked about. You've just stated all the negative emotions that you feel on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's not having discipline, not having focus, right? Not being able to express yourself, not taking action, all those things stem from you caring about what other people think about you, which is not loving yourself. If you had unconditional love for yourself, by definition, all those things would disappear, would liquidate, evaporate, just like that. I mean, it's a process to get there, obviously. When you actually truly love yourself, you're not trying to live up to other people's expectations, meaning you, wouldn't, you would be fearless.
You wouldn't even have courage. You would be fearless. Jesus, he, I mean, the, the story of Jesus, whether you, he's fiction or not, is the greatest example of this. Jesus did not have courage. Jesus was fearless. There was no idea of having to, to even be courageous or be disciplined. or None of that had to happen because he loved himself unconditionally. Only The idea of discipline is I must force myself to take this action. Meaning you don't even want to take the action. Which means you don't love yourself. You truly love yourself. You don't force yourself to do anything. Because it's unconditional. Let's take expressing yourself. If you truly unconditionally love yourself, don't hold back on what you have to say. If you truly want to express yourself. That's not loving. Putting back is not loving. Not taking action on the things that you want is not loving. point that i'm getting at is once you actually understand love see that the way god you see the way god loves you which is unconditional here's the thing right here's here's the thing yeah and i'm about nix i'm about to get to your question up next and i'm gonna head out but here's the thing right here's the here's the key point that everyone's missing because everyone has a flawed view of god's love they then have a flawed view of themselves We've been trained to think that God's love is conditional. Conditional, meaning you have to do set requirements in order for God to love you. That's not the case. That's not love then. That is not love, right? The Bible says that God gave you free will. Like, oh, I could go on and on about the, the, the religion of Christianity. It is literally the most, out of all the religions that I've studied, and I've studied the majority of them. I've studied Judaism. I've studied Islam. Islam is my favorite. I love Islam, even though it's still a whole bunch of contradictions. Uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christian. But out of all the religions, and this is the, the religion that I grew up in, which is Christianity. Christianity is the most flawed. <laughs> also, it is, is the most... Um, I'm not even, That's a whole other conversation. No, I'm, I'll move on. But one of the things that the Bible says is... Uh, fuck, I forgot my original point. I'm ADHD. That... Everyone has a flawed perception of God's love, right? I think that you must... I want to talk about free will, right? So just think about how stupid this is. This is stupid. And every Christian believes this. If God gave you free will, there's this idea that he makes mistakes. If God is a perfect God, which the Bible says God is a perfect God, what is this idea of him giving you free will and then creating an entire system of him trying to fix the fact that you guys have free will. Like what? Gave you free will and then is going to punish you for exercising your free will? It's flawed. It's literally a contradiction. Going to give you free will, which is the ultimate, ultimate expression of love is to give someone free will, right? They can do whatever they want. You're going to love them unconditionally. So he's going to give you an unconditional present, an unconditional gift, and then set up an entire system that is conditional. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? And every time you're in church and you ask this question, what does the pastor say? Oh, well, we don't really know. Just have faith. Right? Just have faith. Don't question anything. Don't try to reverse engineer anything. Don't try to really understand the truth. Just have faith. Blindly obey what we tell you. Just obey. Just blindly obey the words in the book, even though it was written by human beings. It was written by human beings, but it's God's word. So you're just supposed to obey it. You're not supposed to question anything. The human beings couldn't have made any mistakes while they were writing the text. Not at all. Even though it was passed down from generation to generation to generation from generation, rewritten hundreds of th thousands of times the book was rewritten. There's no mistakes that could possibly, there could be no contradictions. It's God's word. Well, if God is an infinite God, by definition, the book can't be God's words. If God is an infinite God, then the book needs to be infinite. It's infinite truths to learn. Boom, 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 boom. I brought that to a hundred, hundreds of pastors. Oh, wait, 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 just have faith. Anyways, that's besides the point. The, the underlying point that I'm getting at with this conversation, <laughs> we could talk about Christianity on another day, that because no one actually really knows the truth about what love is, they have a flawed perception of God's love.
Because of that, they now have a flawed perception of themselves. They go, well, if God requires me to live a specific way in order to receive love, then that means I can't love myself unconditionally. I have to achieve this amount of success. I have to do this and do that and yada yada in order to love myself. And that, by definition, is not love. Once you understand that God unconditionally, no matter what you do, there are still consequences, but God didn't create the consequences. You create the consequences. And that's all another conversation. But no matter what you do, God loves you no matter what. That now gives you the ability to love yourself unconditionally. You just said, Brad, I feel like others' opinions of you also don't exist if you don't believe in God's existence. For example, my friends say that what they feel like at that part of the time, validation, but then they'll forget about it later because they don't care. We all care about that 10 seconds of dopamine, which all comes from the form of happiness. If God had a physical form and gave you validation, only then will people believe in God. But I love the God, but I love the God, whether what form he takes, I, I still love God. Scientists don't try to Prove or disprove God's existence because they know there isn't an experiment that they've ever detected God. And if you do, if you believe in God, it doesn't matter what scientists discover about the universe, any cosmos. Exactly. I mean, a, a lot of the reasons why atheists don't believe in God is because of they're talking about the religious definition of God. And religion and spirituality are two different things. For the atheists, like they have this idea, they are going off their perception that God is a human being is what a lot of religious people believe and that is flawed there's no direct proof of that at all so i could understand why they believe that there wouldn't be a god i'm not talking about that i'm not talking about a human being floating in the sky talking about what god actually is and there's all that's a whole other conversation that we're not about to get into what's god's form it's just infinite consciousness right Super simple, dude. Super simple. Our negative energies are positive energies. The way that you, and there are such things as unconditional positive energies that you can feel that everyone calls the, the, the underlying name of that energy is called God. Most people on the planet. The way that you can feel unconditional love of that energy of that entity which is the next question i want to get to because someone said well how do we feel unconditional love right. how do we get there the way that you get there simply boils down to choice it's simple it's simple but it's hard it's, it's it's simple in the sense that it just simply boils down to choice if God wants to have a relationship with you, which he does, then he wouldn't create a system for it. He wouldn't create a system where it's difficult to have a relationship with him. That's a, another contradiction. He wouldn't create this super complex system where it's going to take your entire life in order to have a relationship with God and, and feel unconditional love, yada, yada. He wouldn't do that. That would be not loving. God has made it very, very simple. All you have to do is feel God's love to begin allowing yourself to feel God's love. The way that you do that is you need to start to practice loving yourself unconditionally. 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 I, I can't stress that enough. Unconditionally. The way that everyone loves themselves is not love because it's not unconditional. Everyone's placing conditions on themselves because that's the way that Satan taught us to. Satan taught us to, okay, well, I need to make sure I get straight A's and then I can be happy. Okay, I need to, I need to abide by everyone else's definition of what success is. And then once I've reached that, then I can love myself. By definition, that's not love. And that is not even how God sees you. Why are you playing by those rules? But ask yourself, who created those rules? 
created those rules? Is this clicking? Are you seeing the, the separation of attraction versus love? That, that's the, the biggest thing I, I need you guys to see. The difference between actual love, actual love, which is unconditional, like all the, like, I know I'm, I said I didn't subscribe to religion, but even the, all the religious books say it. Even all the religious books have said it. God's love is unconditional. And here's the most beautiful part about it. This is why I do love reading the Bible sometimes, <laughs> right? When they're not spilling contradictions. If God sees you unconditionally, then that means your level of self-worth is unconditional. Placing barriers and limitations on yourself, not going after all the things that you want in life as if self-worth reflects that. Bro, that's not how God sees you. Are you limiting yourself? Are you not going after the things that you want? It goes back to the other question. Who are you living for? The world or God? I said, for real? I am serious? <laughs> Wait, what was the... What are you talking about? What was the question? I said, because we have been programmed to feel and act that way. Exactly. It's the Matrix. Matrix has taught you place limitations on yourself before you can even like yourself. And how has your program worked out? Said, what Brad is trying to tell you is that the majority of you are living like modern day slaves. The individuals that rule the world have taught you how to act and think. That's facts. The system that you're operating in, who wrote the rules? Did God write the rules? Or did the people who run the world? Did Satan write the rules? So, look, the big underlying points. So someone said, Brad, so there is no condition to be loved from God. That is the point, my friend. That is the underlying point. There are no conditions to be loved by God. Circumstances in your life are different. But that's not God creating those. The circumstances that you create in your life, you created those. If you live out of harmony with God's love, if you do things that are not loving to yourself, not loving emotions happen to you. But in order to receive God's love, receive it, it's already there. Birth to death. It's unconditional. The definition of love. If God sees you that way, that means you see yourself that way. Stop beating yourself up all the time because you don't have what you have yet. Go after those things. Conquer. Go accomplish. Stop limiting yourself and stop holding yourself back. And most importantly, stop not loving yourself because you haven't reached a certain point in your life yet. That's not even loving. That making sense. Is this making sense? You know in the chat. Yes, 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 yeah. Oh. Okay, Brad, King Brother. <laughs> What's going on, my man? Shout out to you. Yes, 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 it does. Yes, indeed, yes. I'm straight. Good. Uh, but are you guys noticing how powerful this is? I don't think you guys are noticing how powerful this is. Bro, if you understand that no matter what, God loves you, that means you don't need to be Trying to live for to, to validate anybody else. You don't need to receive anybody else's love because you're already filled with God's love. And once you remove the need to receive everybody else's love, oh, you're free. There is no pressure. Remember, all we, we said all those negative traits, the anxiety, 
lack of discipline, the lack of confidence, all that is stemming from you not being free. You trying to live up to someone's expectations. Lack of discipline. All those things evaporate once you allow yourself to love yourself this way that God loves you. Now, someone said, and someone just asked a great question. I was waiting for this question. It's going to be one of the next live streams. So someone said, so if there are no conditions, there are no sins that affect your relationship with God. It's absolutely false. Sin still exists, right? That doesn't affect your relationship with God in the sense of God not loving you. God's love is unconditional. He'll love you no matter what. It does affect your relationship with God in the sense that you won't be able to see or feel God's love because you're choosing to live out of harmony. That's, your, that's the exercise of your own free will. That's not God. So like there's, there's this whole idea that God sends people to hell. That God himself is the one that does judgment day. He takes you and he's like, mm, okay, let me take a look at your life. Oh, you're bullshit. All right, bye. Throws you to the pits of hell. Is that loving? No. Okay, so then how would an individual go to hell? Create it. Create it. Your free will. If God is only love, then that means anytime you do something that is out of harmony with love, there's going to be consequences that don't reflect love. That is not God's fault. That's your fault. The other thing that religion tries to do is try to like remove responsibility off of yourself. That's one of the things that a lot of atheists believe. Oh, well, if God loves everybody, then why is there so much evil in the world? He didn't create it. You did. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a... He didn't create it. You did. It's like, that's like, that's literally like, imagine gifting somebody a, a car, right? Let's say, you, let's say you get rich and you buy your friend a car, right? You buy your friend a car friend has free will he starts to go drive the car right you give you give you give car to your friend as a gift for his birthday he then goes off on the highway starts driving 120 miles an hour and then he runs over somebody and kills them right? he just did something unloving to himself and to that other person that's like going i did that's like taking that person's death let's say i'm the one that gave that person that car as a gift and saying it's Brad's fault that this individual died from getting hit by a car. What the fuck? Am I responsible for driving that vehicle? I simply gave you the car as a gift in which you can do what you want with your free will. It doesn't make any sense to blame me for the fact that you killed somebody else driving that car. <laughs> right? Well, if, if that's common sense, why does everyone do that with God? Hmm? That's what the atheists do, right? Atheists will go, well, God gave me the car, so it's his fault that I went off and, and killed somebody with it. What? Oh? Huh? That's a great question. They said, Brad, if we create evil, or excuse me, how do we create evil? Can you elaborate? Exactly. If, guys, listen, if God, and this is not an if, this is an objective fact, God is love. God is only love. Love is unconditional, right? God is only love. Be in that state of love. You have to live a certain way. If you live an unloving life, you think it's going to be harder to receive God's love? It's kind of like this. Imagine you're in, a, you're in a relationship with somebody, but you never talk to them. Never talk to them. Not only that, you're constantly beating that person up. You're constantly just, you're constantly just doing negative things to them. Or even physically being abusive, which is just terrible, right? Let's just say you're constantly 
ruining that person's life. You're just hurting them. You're constantly just verbally abusing them, being disrespectful, right? But that person still unconditionally loves you. They, they just take the beating. Now, let's say you want to love that person. They unconditionally love you. They're there for you always. You have never necessarily felt it because every time you enter the room, you just start berating them, start hurting them, start abusing them. Are you going to be able to feel their love if when you enter the room, you're abusing them? That's a you thing. That's not a them thing. They're just sitting there taking it. They never retaliate, never fight back. They just simply love you. They just take the beating. While you're beating them, <laughs> or let's just say verbally abusing, are you actually receiving that person's love? Are you loving them? It takes two to tango. So it's kind of like you're beating somebody up, you're ruining someone else's life, which makes the relationship weird because you're on your part not being loving, and you blame the other person. That's what we do with God. That question of how we how do how do we create evil or how do we create our own sin? Someone's being someone's loving you, and then you're choosing not to reciprocate that love. It takes two to tango, brother. When the, when the energy between you guys is weird, whose fault is that? They didn't do anything wrong. They, they're simply just being loving. Or the one not being loving, doing negative things, then somehow still wanting or being like, well, why do I not love this person? And then even worse, you start to blame the other person. Even though they did nothing wrong. That's how we treat God. Our sister is absolutely unconditionally loving. We beat him up. Every single day. We don't even pay attention to him. Think about how much time of the day you even pay attention to God. And think about God. And this is myself included. Right? Constantly beating God up. And then you wonder why the relationship is weird. And you blame God. It's crazy. God is only love. And when you live out of harmony with God's love. There is cause and effect in the universe universe reflects what you do with your free will okay does that make sense does that makes sense but it's not god's fault and that's a great question so not loving unconditionally itself is a sin yes absolutely From god's perspective that is a sin god doesn't judge you for it god's love is unconditional but from god's perspective that is a sin. Because if God sees you that way and you don't see yourself that way, then that means you're living out of harmony with truth. Absolutely a sin. Absolutely a sin. That's the point that I'm getting at. Who are you living for? World? Unconditional. Or God? Oh, unconditional. Someone asked a great question. They said, well, what if you don't care how God sees you? It's totally fine. God loves you unconditionally. So he's not going to, I mean, obviously God would want you to care about how God sees you. But you have, he gave you the gift of free will. You can do whatever you want and God will just love you unconditionally. But that doesn't mean that there's not consequences to the actions of your free will. The consequences don't come from God. They come from you creating the consequences. Like I said with the car example. God gifted you a car, God gifted you a vehicle, and then you can, he says, no matter what you do with this car, I'm always going to love you. And then you go take that car and you start driving recklessly with it and you start running over people, killing people. And then you go, well, why is my life in shambles? And then like, you, go, you go take the car, you drive over somebody, and then the police put you in jail and you're sitting in the jail cell going, why would, why would God create such a, a terrible place to live? All these bad things happen. People getting ran over by cars. It's God's fault. How the fuck is it God's fault? You did it. That's what atheists do 24-7. Like most atheists are like, well, God's not loving. Because once again, atheists don't understand. And religious people don't understand. So of course, atheist people wouldn't understand. They don't understand God's love because a lot of religious texts give false indoctrinations as to what God's love is. Because God's love is not 
conditional, but that's what a lot of the books say, even though they also say in the same book that it's unconditional, it's a whole contradiction. But anyway, so atheists believe, well, if God's love is conditional and that's not love, they're right. The atheists are right on that part. If everyone understood the actual God, it's just unconditional love. All these conversations, they would, they would, would change. It wouldn't be a beef between atheists and religious people. Everyone would know the truth. Someone said, Brad, so God loves you even if you kill people? I'm going to say this one last time and then I'm going to hang out. I'm going to log out. God's love is unconditional. I don't know how many times I have to say it. I know this is a, this is a foreign... I, I, it's very sad. I, under, I understand. I completely understand. It's going to take a, sec a second for you guys to sit with, dissect, you know, contemplate. The answer is yes. Love. If God is love, like all the religious books say, they're, they're right about it. If God is love, love is unconditional. No matter what you do, God always loves you at all times. There is no taking away his... If God goes, oh, well, you killed someone, so he takes his love away from you. And he's like, okay, you need to go, you need to go do this and do that and, and become a better person, and then I'll give my love back to you. That's conditional, which means it's not love. How many times do I have to say it? It's unconditional. No, it's probably the first time you're hearing this. It's unfortunate. It's unconditional. It's unconditional. Unconditional. Anytime there are any conditions on love, it is not love anymore. It's simply just a value exchange of attraction. Does that make sense? This is basic. What's so funny too is that this is almost like a foreign concept to most people. And it's the most logical common sense. If God gave you free will, then by definition, that means love can't be conditional. Otherwise, you wouldn't have free will. This is a very logical. I don't even call it an argument, objective fact. It's just a truth. It's the truth of God. God's love, which is the only form of love there is, is unconditional. If, any, if anyone or anything places conditions on something, then it's not love. Because that means you must abide by set rules in order to receive it. Then the second part to that is, just because God's love is unconditional does not mean that you can't create unloving situations for yourself. Right? Someone's going to go, oh, well, I can kill people and God's going to love me, so I'm just going to go kill people. Okay, great. Now you've ruined your own life. God still loves you. You don't love yourself. Up the mic. Let me say that again. God still loves you, but you don't love yourself. If you actually loved yourself, you wouldn't be trying to kill people. That's very common sense. God loves you, but you don't love yourself. Because some retard is going to go, oh, well, that means if God loves me no matter what, which is a truth, then that means I'm just going to go curse out my parents. Fuck them. That would be sin. Because if God loves you unconditionally, you must love your, yourself unconditionally, but you also must be living in love itself. Love unconditionally also means you only abide by loving actions only do loving things loving unconditionally doesn't mean you just simply you just forgive yourself i mean it does mean you you forgive yourself for everything that you do if you make a mistake you forgive yourself but if you do something that you see as oh man that was actually wrong you forgive yourself because that's what lo love is unconditionally but love also means you only do loving actions going out and, and harming other people is that loving no. Don't try to be retarded about this. So there's always that one person that is just retarded. Like they just have no self esteem, just insanely insecure, and they're like, oh, well, let me figure out a way to use this to go sin, go be even more satanic. It's like, bro, chill, chill, grow the fuck up, honestly.
All right, guys. Already, I've already uh over the time. Do you guys find this valuable? Even if you don't agree, even if you don't even agree, which this is a very, very logical argument. Are you still? Is this something that you can think about? Something that you can take home with you later today or later this week and actually, you know, contemplate a little bit? Okay. Well, if if God's love is 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 truly unconditional, then why am I placing conditions on myself? Why am I living up to other people's expectations? Why am I trying to please everybody other than God? Why am I trying to make sure that this person likes me and that person likes me? Why, and most importantly, why am I being unloving to myself? Why am I being loving to my, unloving to myself? If God loves me no matter what, shouldn't, I, shouldn't that mean that God thinks I should love myself the same way? Otherwise, he wouldn't, if God thought I wasn't worthy of being unconditionally loved, then he wouldn't unconditionally love me. This is very, very rational thinking. But the reason why people haven't gotten this far is because they've had a very misconstrued perception of what God's love is. They think that God's love is conditional. Once again, that still doesn't outdo, that still doesn't override the fact that you create your life circumstances. Doesn't, just because God loves you doesn't mean that sin doesn't exist. But sin is created by you, as we already just went through, as 15 minutes. You, if you, God gave you free will, which is unconditional love, right? it's like gifting someone a car, but if you go take that car and start driving over people, <laughs> and you, you decide to take that car and, and ruin the engine, right, and you decide to take that car and, you know, go ruin the tires, and just basically just break down the car, then you're on the side of the road now, and you're wondering, well, why is my engine not working? Why did I just get put in jail for running over people? It must be God's fault. Was because God is not loving. Uh, no. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you? Is because you chose to do that? <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Someone just asked a great. Are you? Are you? Are, are you guys seeing this? Are you guys receiving value? Yes. 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 This is valuable. Yes, it is valuable. Yes, this has great value. Good. I, 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 this is something that if the majority of people on the planet understood that no matter what, God loved them, right? And this takes a lot of humility. This takes a lot of um, takes a lot of contemplation because we've been taught by the matrix to think otherwise. If you understood that God loves you, no matter what you believe that God is, it, you can believe that God's a person, God's an energy, right? Like, or God's a, a dude sitting in the cloud. No matter what, right? The underlying point is still the fact that if you understand truthfully and genuinely not just intellectually but you've embodied this in your heart your soul god loves you unconditionally now opened up door's box loving yourself unconditionally if every single human being did that on an individual level where would we be as a speed where would we be Where will we be? I said, um, God is a concept. We'll actually be talking about that very soon because God is actually not a concept. There is actually, here's so, I'm going to leave you guys with this. This is something you can think about. Even though I'm not really giving any premise for it until the next live stream. But the reason why everyone believes in God, and rather than, the reason why everyone believes in God, so let's take religious people, right? Let's take Christians. I like picking on Christians. Because I, I spent my entire life being a Christian, right? Blindly following their doctrine. Everyone claims, Christians claim, you know, they understand the Bible, they believe in God. If you truly believed in God, then why are you not living in accordance with God's unconditional love? If you truly and actually believed in your book, truly, and genuinely, if you're actually being honest with yourself and you truly, genuinely believe in your book why aren't you living in accordance with it uh, this this is where humility comes into play this is where you have to humble yourself and actually take a look at the, the life that you've created for yourself how much of the time of the day and this i mean this goes for all religious people i don't care, muslim christian whatever how much of the time of your day are you actually spending with god and how much time of your day are you actually spending living the laws in your book most Christians, I'm speaking on Christians because I was a Christian my entire life. Most Christians aren't actually Christians. They simply follow the doctrine and they and they claim to be Christians because they're afraid of going to hell. 
they're being honest with themselves. Majority of the week, all they do is prioritize sinning and most importantly, prioritize living for other people rather than God. And then as soon as Sunday comes, they go, oh shit, I sinned all week. I might be going to hell. Let me get my ass up, go to church, then rinse and repeat. I'll just do that all over again. And I'll do that my entire life. Reason why most people can't live harmony with God, laws in their book, because they're blindly believing in it. There's actually when you believe something, there is room for doubt. Anytime you simply believe in something, belief is just one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum, there's doubt. Where there is belief, there is doubt. That is why most religious people are completely hypocritical into the way that they like. It's so funny too. Like you'll take Christians and they'll try to um, they'll try to like really try to get people to subscribe to their religion, right? But the way that they're going about it is unloving. Also, are you yourself living in accordance with your own doctrine? If you're not living in accordance with your doctrine, why are you trying to push your doctrine onto other people? Would that not pragmatically be? asinine what do you not see that that is hypocritical you must embody the things that you're trying to teach if you want to have other people subscribe to it you must be the things that you want to teach that's simple the reason why most religious people aren't living in accordance with their own doctrine that they claim they believe in is because they believe in it they don't know it most people believe in god they don't no, God. And there is two totally, that's two totally different things. Two totally different things. Belief in something, like for example, all of us, whenever you actually know something, you live in accordance with it. Your, your life is centered around, when you know something, it becomes the nucleus of the way that you take action, the way that you live your life. Your habits are built around that. For example, we all know that the sun is yellow. Right? Why? Because we can see it. My window is right here. The sun's outside. It's yellow. But it doesn't matter if everybody on planet Earth tells me that the sun is green. I can see with direct experience that the sun is yellow. Therefore, I live in accordance with that. You see how different that is from how religious people live. I'll just take Christians to pick on them, for example. <laughs> they have no direct experience of God simply blindly belief in god because it gives them hope right we live in a very satanic world and uh you know people even though they have no di direct experience of their god the reason why they cling to it so permanently even though they have no direct experience or no proof is because it gives them hope and if you take away hope from a human being that's when nihilism actually hits right so even though they have no proof um the reason why they cling to it so heavily from hope but they believe in god and when there's belief without knowing this where there's belief without direct experience there is always going to be room for doubt. Always. When you have doubt lingering in the back of your head, you're not going to live in, in accordance with your beliefs. Make sense? The underlying part, I want to get out with that one question. Someone asked, um, uh, or someone said, God is, what they say? God is concept. There's actually way takes humility and practice you can have direct experience of god god would not make it complex for his own creation to have a relationship and to know with the direct experience that he exists if he did if he did make it super complex that would be unloving or oh, it contradicts his entire point of creating humanity which is to have a relationship i mean every holy book says the whole purpose of god creating us was to have a relationship with us and that'd be a contradiction to actually to want a relationship with somebody and then do everything in your power to make sure that it's difficult for them to have a relationship with you. Is that not another huge contradiction? Once you see all these contradictions, once you actually understand love, everything else just makes sense. You see all the contradictions that are in play. You see why you see why people live in accordance with what they believe in, why religious people don't actually follow their own teachings and why they're hypocrites, but also why they cling on to it so hard then you see also why atheists believe what they believe all goes back to that one foundational miscons misconstrued idea of god's love that it's conditional
All right. All right, guys. I gotta head out now. This is fun. It's just, listen, I'm not claiming to know anything. I'm not claiming for you to believe me. I'm not claiming for you to follow my teachings. None of that bullshit. That's, that shit's gay. We're all free willed individuals, sentient beings that can do whatever the fuck we want. I am not advising you take anything that I say seriously. I advise that you train your own awareness, ask questions. <laughs> Someone said, log off already, nigga. I, I advise that you ask your own questions, self analyze, self introspect, and do your own research, do your own direct experience. Experiment on your own. Ask questions. Don't just blindly believe something. Take all topics as an experiment, the same way any scientist does. You must receive feedback. You must experiment. You must place a hypothesis. You must experiment. You must receive feedback. You must continue to experiment. Test these test ideas out. Test things out and see what happens in your direct experience. But the underlying message that I want to give is that my direct experience, not my belief. I don't operate off belief or blind faith. That shit's retarded. That's how people end up in the matrix. That's why we have this matrix. But in my direct experience, God's love is unconditional. There is no conditions. Once you're able to actually let this body consume your soul, and once you get direct experience of, a, of this as truth, not just simply a belief system that you're just blindly following because your parents and uh, your, your church told you to, once you actually see this with direct experience, everything changes. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today. You guys have a beautiful Saturday. It's about to get crazy on the, on the channel. Like I said, we're about to do, whew, man, we're about to do, man, so much. We're rebuilding this entire server from the ground up. We're about to ho host so much stuff on the YouTube channel, host so much stuff in here, Twitch, YouTube live streams. It's about to get insane. We're going back to pure self-development. Um, IMP is cool, but that was just simply a phase. It's time to evolve. It's time to grow the fuck up. It's time, to, it's time to evolve, man. This is what we're all here to do. Grow, develop, learn, and uh, what makes life beautiful. So I thank you guys for joining me. I'll be back soon. Stay on the lookout for the next videos. We've got a Blue Lock video coming up. Should be tomorrow morning. They're straight after that, uh, Johan. The Johan series is going to be fire. After that, we're going straight back to self-development. It's going to be fun. This is MK Brad. I'll see you guys in the next one.